In the previous lesson, I used an analogy, and I used the analogy of driving a car to talk about navigation. This lesson is about grids and guides, and tell you what, I got nothing. So let's just get into grids and guides and talk about how we can use them. Let's go to the word file on the pull down menu in Illustrator, of course, and go to new. And I'm just going to use a default web here just to open up a place to play our sandbox. I'm going to use a couple of tools that we haven't really gotten into yet. That's all right, we will. For example, I'll pick up this tool right here, which is the ellipse tool, and I can draw an ellipse. Or if I hold the shift key down, I can draw a perfect circle. Just like that. It is selected. Let me come over here and give it a color so we can see it better. Come over, pick up my move tool. Now we can move it, we know that. But if I hold the Alt key down, that's the Option key in a Mac, and Alt key in Windows, then drag it, I create copies. Now I'm doing a lousy job of aligning these things up. Let's talk grids and guides here. I will admit up front before you say anything that, Andy, if you want to align those, say horizontally or vertically, there's a much easier way to do that through the alignment panel, I agree. But let's start here because there are some tricks about these we can use. Let's go up to the word view on the pull down menu and go down to show grid. Now let's say we like that, but the color is very close to something we're working on, so it's hard to see, or we want to change the relationship of the guides themselves or the grids. So we come up here and we go to the word edit in Windows, Illustrator on Mac, and go into preferences and go to guides and grid. Now in here, down here, here's grid, here's guides up here. You can do kind of the same thing. Change the color of the guides and change from lines to dots if you want to. Down here you have a little bit more. For example, well, I want that grid a little bit more pronounced, darker. So I'll make it a little bit darker like that. That's fine. Close this out. Do you want solid or dots? I like solid. The grids are every 72. Okay, and there are eight subdivisions between each one. You can change that. Do you want the grids in the back? If you turn that off, the grids come on top of everything. Now you still, well, you can still select stuff. It's no big deal. But sometimes I do want them in the front. Sometimes I want them in the back. Most of the time I want them in the back. And do you want them to show above 600% zoom? Click OK. Let's see, they got just a little bit darker. Now I can come up and visually say, OK, I want them right there. So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to move this one down here, which would be a tedious, painful kind of way to do it, but we could. But how do I know I'm getting them exactly left to right aligned up? Well, I can go up to the word view again and go down to snap to grid. So we have a grid, snap to the grid, which means that they will snap to those points automatically if I move things. Now that would be, I suppose, another way to do it, but I wouldn't recommend it because it would be kind of difficult. Now, let's say we're done using the grid, and we go up to the word view and we turn it off. It now says hide grid. You may notice something when you begin moving things. They're still going to snap to the grid. You don't have to see it for it to snap. So if you're having trouble moving things, and they seem to be going places you don't want them to go, you might go back to the word view and go down to snap to grid, turn it off, which then makes these free again. Let's talk about guides. Now, guides are produced through the rulers, so we need our rulers. The shortcut is Control, and uh, that's Control in Windows, Command on a Mac, R. Instant rulers. If we click on a ruler in drag, we pull out a guide. Now, let's say I want that guide at exactly over there on the left, 144. See right there? How do I know I'm really at 144? Now understand, what I'm about to do is a one-off. It will only work the first time you pull the guide out of that ruler. Hold down the shift key while you're dragging it. And it will snap to the tick marks. And now I know it is exactly at 144. But what if I wanted it at 145 or 143 or 272 or whatever? A number that's not on the ruler. It is selectable. Okay, so select it. Come up here to transform right here, and you can see it's 144. We nailed it, okay? But if I wanted at, oh, 247, and then press the return key, or that's return on Mac, enter in Windows, and boom, it will move it exactly there. 
Now, by default, guides are snap. It will snap to them automatically if you've got the guides out there on the screen. So we've got a horizontal guide. Let's say we're pulling another one down, but we forgot we wanted a vertical. So you say, well, I think I'll just get rid of this one. Do you ever try to put a guide back into the ruler bar in Illustrator? It's kind of like it teases you. It says, oh, go a little bit fast. Now, you can if you do it really fast. But tell you what, that is a hard thing to do. Here's an easier way to do it. Select it and delete it. It's an object. Just press the delete key. That's the backspace key in Windows and delete on a Mac. Let me go ahead and get our stuff back by double clicking on the hand tool. Okay, I'm dragging it down again, but again I made the mistake. I need a vertical, not a horizontal. Don't get rid of it. Don't delete it. Before you let go of your mouse, hold down the Alt key. Option key on a Mac, Alt in Windows, and it will reverse it into a vertical or whatever it wasn't. Let go of the mouse first, and so we've got a couple of guides on our screen now. If we go back to the word view, and go to Guides, the options are to hide them temporarily, which is a command or control in Windows, command on a Mac, semicolon. We can lock them, which means don't move them anymore. We can call Make Guides, we'll talk about that in a second, Release, and then Clear. Let's say we're, we're done with all of them, so we say Clear Guides. Gets rid of them, we don't have them anymore. Here's a trick in Illustrator that I really do like. Remember, guides are objects. Whether you know this or not, guides can go into a layer. Now over here again, we haven't really talked much about the Layers panel, but this button right here is for a new layer. So I click it. I make a new layer. I'm going to call that layer Guides, because that's what's about to go into it. Make sure you have it selected, and so it looks like that. Now go up here and grab a guide. If I come over here, watch. They are in that layer. Now the cool thing about that is they're still maneuverable. We can change them. We can do anything we want with them. But if we click here, we lock that layer. And in doing so, we lock the guides. Now guides don't print, so don't worry about that part of it. When I'm working in Illustrator, I use a guide layer. And I can do the same thing actually in InDesign. It's a very easy way to control them, but we're not done. Let me go ahead and press Control A and delete. Now I'll unlock this one. If I press Control A, delete, then those would go too. But since it was locked, they didn't get selected. That's another way to control them. Now let's leave the guides layer selected. And I want a guide that actually is, well, 45 degrees. Now I don't care what button you hold down. If you drag from here or here, you're getting a 90 degree vertical horizontal. Okay, that's what you're going to get. Check this out. Pick up your line segment tool right here and draw a line. Say, hold the shift key down, you'll get 45 degrees. Now that's a line. I could use it to visually line things up, but nothing's going to snap to it because it's not a guide. But if I have it selected, and I go up to the word view and down to guides, I can say make that a guide. And that is now a guide with all the rights and privileges of what a guide does. Snapping and everything else, no printing. You just made yourself your own guide. Now let me do a control A delete again. Let's go into our rectangle tool and let's go back to layer one. Let me come over here and I'm going to draw a box that literally kind of fills that area and it will snap to the edges for you. And I'm just going to make the whole thing fit and let's give it a color so we can see it. Now let's say that we want a couple of pieces out of that box. We want, a, well let's do this. Let's make it simple. Let me pick up a guide from up here and I'm going to pull it down to 144. I'll hold the shift key down. Now why am I doing this? Why do I want to cut that top part out? Well, I'm doing a web page, and I need two separate areas. And the top area is going to be for navigation, you know, whatever. Now, here's the cool thing. Once I've done that with the guide, I can use the guide kind of like a knife. So if I pick up my selection tool, and I make sure that I do have that guide selected right there, the first thing I need to do, and it doesn't have to be in a separate layer. Actually, we drew both of those in the same layer. That's fine. If I go up to the word view and go down to guides, I'm going to say release the guide. Now what does that do? 
when you release a guide, it turns it into a line segment. As if it never was a guide, we can now use it as a line segment, just like the one we drew. But leave it selected, go up to the word object on the pull down menu, and go down to Path, and select Divide any of those objects that are below it. Divide objects below. Click it. Okay, if I come back up here again, you will notice I now have two separate pieces. Each one can be controlled independently of the other, and I've cut it using a guide. Now think about making a 45 degree angle guide, turning it into a guide, releasing it, and then saying divide objects below. Easy to do. Guides are more to me than aligning. If I'm aligning things, I'm probably going to use things like the align panel. But for cutting, or maneuvering, or getting specific types of guides at angles, guides can be a very valuable tool when you're working in Adobe Illustrator.